It's good to see you. At my age, it's good to be seen. Everybody all right today? A man was driving down the road and he's passing a big high chain link fence and a big sign says insane asylum. And he has a flat blowout. He gets out, he takes the lug nuts off, puts them in the hubcap, goes back to get his spare tire out of the back, and he steps on the hubcap and throws all of his lug nuts off in a ditch full of water, water and weeds. And he thinks, what in the world am I going to do? God, I, got, I can't get in that water. It's deep. And a guy's standing there looking through the fence. And he says, why don't you take one of the lug nuts off of the other three tires and put them on this tire, and that'll be good enough to get you into town so you can get another tire or lug nuts. And he says, what are you doing in that insane asylum? He said, I may be crazy, but I'm not stupid. <laughs> How many ever felt like you were a little borderline on being crazy? Yeah. I'm glad you're here then. You're in the right place. <laughs> Matthew 8. We're going to get off of prophecy for a while. Matthew 8. Beginning at verse 5, Jesus had entered into Capernaum, and there was a centurion came beseeching him, saying, Lord, my servant is homesick of the palsy and is grievously tormented. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. Now, the interesting background to this. This is a centurion, he's a Roman. A centurion was over a hundred men. And here he comes to Jesus. And Jesus says, I will come and heal him. And this, listen to what he said. The centurion said, Lord, I am not worthy that you come under my roof but speak the word only, and my servant will be healed. For I am a man under authority. He said, I have people who are over me that I have to answer to, but I also have soldiers under me, and they have to listen to me. I tell one of them to go, he goes. I tell one to come, he comes, and I tell one, to do this and he's going to do it. And when Jesus heard that, now listen to what Jesus said. He said it to them that followed him. He said, I've never found that much faith in all of Jerusalem. Now listen to the message today. Jesus said, I will come and I will heal him. The sermon today is I will. Everybody say, I will. I will. The biggest reason that God's people do not get answer to prayer, they do not have their needs met, they don't seem to receive anything from God, is because we do not know what His will is for us. The only limit God has are the limits that we somehow put on him. And we put limits on him, and therefore we cannot get his attention. He cannot pass the limits you put on him. 
Now there are two wills here. There was, there was the will, God's will, and, and your will. Now, we all know that nothing is impossible with God. We limit God because we're not convinced what his will is for us. I want us to take the limits off of God for a little while today. I want to just take the limits off. Do you want your kids sick, suffering, and broke? Do you, is that what you want for your kids? Do you think that's what God wants for his kids? What limits have you put on God? Why is it that you don't seem to get through to God? In 3 John, verse 2, there's only one chapter. He said, Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper, now listen, and be in health, even as your soul prospers. Three things. He said, this is what my will is, my wish, my desire is for you. Now, anything less than that is contrary to God's word. It's contrary to God's provision. It's contrary to God's promises. It's contrary to everything that God, our Father, says. Now, no father wants his kids to be beat down, sick, broke. I have to be careful. We sometimes pray and then put a qualifier on our prayer. We pray and we ask God for something and then we put a qualifier on it. If it be thy will. Well, if you don't know what his will is, you better find out what his will is and get your will in line with God's will and quit putting qualifiers on your prayer. That's foolish. Well, maybe God just wants to teach me something. That's why you're sick. That's why you're broke. That's why you can't receive anything from God because God's trying to teach you something. Is that how you teach your kids? Now, I may take a belt to their bottom and some of them I still need to do that. <laughs> but it's not God's will to make you sick or broke. His will is that you live in health, happiness, and abundance. Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper and be in health even as your soul prosper. Now, in the text that we read, this centurion came to Jesus. His servant was sick. He was in bad shape. He was dying. Now, the family servant was part of the family. They lived with the family. They were with them 24 hours a day. They were just actually part of the family. And he said, this servant is sick. I'm sure he went to every doctor in town, tried every medical treatment that could be tried, and nothing happened. My question, when I read these things in the Bible, I always have questions come up in my mind. We don't know how this Roman centurion heard about Jesus. We don't know how he heard about how he was healing people, healing the sick. But he came to Jesus. Isn't it strange when everything else has failed? When the doctor says, there's nothing I can do? 
Just keep him comfortable till he dies. That's when people turn to God. Jesus has become the last resort for a lot of people when he should be the first resort. When something goes wrong in your life or in your family, what's the first thing you do? Call the doctor. Make an appointment. Have you thought about Have you thought about calling the church? saying, have the elders pray for me. Amen. Have the deacons pray for me. Why don't you see how God wants to fix the problem before you let a doctor fix it? Amen. Mike, I don't much like this. Well, quit calling your doctor first and you'll like it a whole lot better. What was Jesus' response when the Roman centurion told him, I have a servant who's sick. He's nigh unto death. And Jesus said, I will come and heal him. I will. That's the sermon. I will come. You need to know God's will for every situation that's going on in your life. And if I put my glasses on, I might see better. <laughs> Not much. <laughs> I will come and heal him. You need to know what God's will is for your life. Uh, how can you have faith for something how can you have faith for salvation, for healing, for prosperity, for answer to prayer, or any miracle, if you don't believe that that's his will? You qualify it. 1 John 3, chapter 8. For this purpose was the Son of God manifested that he might destroy the works of the devil. That's why Jesus came. He had an enemy. His name was Satan, Lucifer. And he came to destroy the works that he does. So what are the works of the devil that he came to destroy? Well, he came to steal, kill, and destroy. And his, his prophets his preachers, his whatever, they're doing the same thing. They steal, kill, and destroy. Now you better listen. Matthew 8, verse 17 declares the will of Jesus. He took our infirmities and he bore our sickness. Amen. It's important that you know what his will is for you. It's not enough to know he's able. You also need to know what his will is. He said, I came to heal them. He came to heal. No man, no church, no preacher, no denomination has the right to change what Jesus willed in his death life and resurrection. He came to deliver and to heal. There's some interesting things. It's God's will that everybody be saved. That's spiritual health. Second Peter 3 verse 9 said, God is not slack concerning his promises, but is long-suffering to us not willing, he is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. It's God's will for you to be saved. That's God's will. It's God's will to heal the soul. 
you get your soul healed to forgive the sins, to remove the guilt of those sins, and to give you a home with him forever. That's God's will. He wants you saved. That's the starting point. It's God's will to heal the sick. That's physical health. So you have spiritual health, salvation. You have physical health. Jesus bore our sickness as well as our sins on Calvary. Amen. Why are so many of God's people sick so often? Jesus bore our sickness as well as our sins on Calvary. And the main reason, now listen, that so many of God's people are sick is because we cannot believe that God will heal us. What is the problem? We believe God will save us, but he bore our sickness as well as our sins. You cannot pray the prayer of faith for anything until you know what you're praying for is the will of God. How can we know that something is the will of God? The only thing on this planet that cannot be questioned or challenged is the Word of God. Everything else is going to pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. But His Word is forever settled in heaven. Now think. Everything that was created was created by the Word of God. Right. He said, let there be light, and there was light. He said, let the dry land appear, and it appeared. He said, let the earth bring forth, and it brought forth. Everything that God said, every time He said it, for something to happen, it happened. Because of the creative power of God's Word. His Word could not be challenged and it could not be questioned. His Word is eternal. Out of nothing, God created everything by the power of His Word. He spoke. He spoke. And it happened. The Gospel of John, the first three verses says, In the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. The same in the beginning was with God. All, thi all things, all things were made by Him, and without Him was not anything made that was made. And then down in verse 14, he said, the Word was made flesh Man. and dwelt among us. Yeah. What was the Word he was talking about? Jesus. What did he come to do? Give him a hand. Yeah, that's good. <laughs> Psalm 119 verse 89 says, the Word of God is forever settled in heaven. Amen. It's done. It's finished. It cannot be changed. It will not be erased. It's going to happen and forever it's settled in heaven. James chapter 1 verse 17. Every good and perfect gift comes down from the Father of lights. Yes. If you're not saved, it's God's will for you to be saved. If you're sick, it's God's will to heal you today. It's documented in God's Word. It's infallible. It cannot be changed, questioned, or challenged. By His stripes, we are healed. Amen. Yeah, give Him some praise. If you're sick, if you're sick, by His stripes, you're healed. A leper came to Jesus one day and he said, if you will, 
you can make me clean. And Jesus answered, I will be clean. Jesus made his will known. And he said, I'm willing. I will. Everybody say, I will. Matthew 12, 15 says, The great multitudes followed him, and he healed them all. Matthew 14, verse 14. Jesus went forth and saw great multitudes, and he was moved with compassion towards them, and he healed their sick. Now Jesus, he healed the sick. He said, yeah, but that was Jesus. He was the Son of God. He commissioned his apostles to do the same thing they had seen him do. Acts 5, 16. There came a multitude out of the cities. They couldn't preach in the cities. They had to move out of the cities like we did. We're not in the city. We're out. Hello. <laughs> we had to move out in the country. If you come here, if you come to the sheep shed, you have to come on purpose because there's nothing else to come down this way for. <laughs> you come on purpose if you show up here. There came a multitude out of the cities bringing their sick to them and they that were vexed with unclean spirits. And listen to this and they were healed, every one. It's God's will to heal. Jesus commissioned us to do the same thing. I'm gonna read you another verse. Mark 16, what did he commission us to do? Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. These signs, now listen, these signs shall follow them that believe. Say, I'm a believer. I'm a believer. He said, these signs will follow you if you're a believer. In my name, they'll cast out devils. Oh, I don't want to talk about devils. Well, you've probably got one. You need somebody to cast him out. Ho, oh, oh. <laughs> They'll speak with new tongues. Well, I don't believe in that. Well, that's what he said. He said, if you believe, that's what you're going to do. He said, if you take up serpents, if you get bit by a snake, it's not going to kill you. If somebody tries to poison you, It'll not hurt you. And says, they will lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Yeah. Right. Yeah. How, yeah. Oh, how many believers do we have here? Let me see your hand. Okay, how many have a hand? Look at it. What did he say to do, if you're a believer, what did he say to do with that hand? If somebody's sick, you don't slap them. <laughs> just lay hands on them. Well, I just don't feel like I'm worthy to lay hands on anybody and pray for them. It's not you, honey. It's him. You're doing it because he told you to do it. It's got nothing to do with you. You're doing it. You're standing in for Jesus. Amen. He uses your hands. He uses your faith to accomplish his will. There came a multitude out of the cities and Jesus was with them. If you're a believer and you got a hand, now you know what to do with it. God's will includes His will. Spiritual health, physical health, and material health. Beloved, I wish above all things that you would prosper. Prosperity. 
that is financial, material prosperity. And be in health, that's physical prosperity. Be in health even as your soul prospers, spiritual prosperity. That's his will. Jesus said, I am come that you might have life and life more abundantly. Paul said, my God shall supply all of your needs according to his riches in glory. How rich is he? I mean, he's got streets of gold, gates of pearl. If he can't get it to you any other way, he could just take one of the bricks off of the street and let you find it. Streets of gold, according to his riches, it's got nothing to do with you. It's all about what he can and will do. What things soever you desire when you pray, believe that you have them. David, the psalmist, the king, he said, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not. What? What? What do you want today? What do you need today? Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. Many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivereth them out of them all. God wants to do something for you today. He wants you to know his power. He wants to do something in this place right now. He's not willing that you be without whatever you need any more than you are willing for your kids to be without anything that you can supply. He is able, he is able, he is able to do exceedingly abundant above all that we could ask or think. Now there is faith here today. You believer, you've got hands. What do you need from God today? Think, what do you need from God today? If, you, if Jesus, picture this. If Jesus walked in that back door, either one of them, and walked down the aisle and came up here, and he looked at you and said, what do you need today? What would you answer? What is your need? You know he could do it. Well, let me tell you something. Jesus said, where two or three of you are gathered together in my name, I will be in the midst of them. I will, I will, I will be in the midst of them. <laughs>